Hello, everyone. I'm James Zhu, and along with my co-authors Anushka Srivastava and Dr. Aaron Johnson, I will be presenting our paper titled Grounding Robot Navigation in Self-Defense Law. For background, I'll first go over how self-defense law is commonly interpreted for humans. Self-defense consists of a threat, protector, and protectee. The threat poses a danger to the protectee, and the protector acts in defense against that threat. For human self-defense, this threat is a person and the protectee defends themselves. So they're both the protector and the protectee. While this is the most common form of self-defense, there exists other legally recognized scenarios such as a third party human protecting another person or a person protecting their property. The question we ask in this work is, how do we analyze self-defense if the threat is instead a robot? Specifically, we look at robots that are not designed with the intention to harm people, but either through robot error or human misinterpretation, there's a perception of potential harm. In particular, we look at the case of public ground robots, such as delivery robots. For these robots that operate around sidewalks, parks, or university campuses, they will encounter people we refer to as non-expert non-users. We posit that these people with the least familiarity with robots will be the most likely to act in self-defense against them. Thus, it is crucial to understand self-defense against robots through the perspective of these non-expert non-users. As a motivating case, consider a person in blue and a robot in black moving along a sidewalk. Initially, the robot follows behind the person at a safe distance. Then, the robot decides to pass the person on the left as to adhere to common social norms. This robot's behavior embodies some human aware motion planning strategies intended to ensure human safety and comfort around robots. However, many factors could make a non-expert, non-user feel threatened by this robot, such as if it were nighttime uh, with no other people around. We propose that self-defense law is a way to anchor our understanding of the outcomes that can occur when human-robot human interaction breaks down. In this work, we'll explore what may lead to a person acting in self-defense against the robot and when it may be legally justified, and also analyze how robot designs and algorithms could be improved to mitigate the likelihood of self-defense situations arising. We'll now go, uh, go over the two primary foundations of self-defense law. The first is a reasonable belief of imminent harm which indicates that a protectee's belief of danger does not need to be absolutely correct, just reasonable. And since robots are new and unfamiliar to many people, a reasonable belief of harm likely will have a lower standard compared to interacting with other humans. Secondly, self-defense law hinges on a proportional response to threat. Since robots are property and less valued than human well-being, a proportional response may mean that damage or destruction of a robot could be justified legally. An important takeaway from this is that we must educate the public about self-defense law and assure them that human well-being will always be prioritized over robots. In that way, we can improve the likelihood of human-robot interactions occurring more smoothly in public. Next, we aim to establish what reasonable beliefs and attitudes toward robots are. To do this, we introduce norms which guide behavior between humans and potentially robots. However, norms in human-robot interaction are currently unestablished. Some designers have begun to encode norms in their robots, but without broad standardization. Additionally, studies have found that norms that are expected of humans don't always transfer well to robots. Therefore, more research must be conducted to evaluate if robot norms can be established that are broadly understood by people. In lieu of established norms, we propose looking at common attitudes people have toward robots. There are several factors that have been found to influence attitudes toward robots, such as past familiarity with robots and robots aligning with human expectations and preferences. However, these traits are difficult to guarantee among the public and non-expert non-users may, may be predisposed to have negative attitudes toward robots, which could contribute to a self-defense scenario. Because of the diversity that exists in public spaces, research should pay particular attention to demographics that may be most likely to distrust robots. 
Lastly, we'll cover the human-robot interaction concept of explainability and how it relates to self-defense. Explainability is defined as the ability of a robot to communicate the reasoning behind the decisions that it's made. Explainability is an important factor for practitioners and users of robots, but how can explainability be useful for non-expert non-users? Consider how loud noises, visual occlusions, and other factors may make communication challenging in public environments. Standardization on how to effectively communicate to people in complex settings would greatly accelerate robot capabilities in these environments and mitigate the likelihood of self-defense scenarios. In conclusion, we argue that self-defense is an important consideration for effective ground robot deployment in human environments. In this paper, we provide four recommendations on how to enable robots to mitigate self-defense situations relevant to industry leaders, researchers, and policymakers throughout the robotics field. In particular, our future work is interested in examining how preferences towards robot designs vary among non-expert non-users. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions and discuss this paper further. Thank you.